Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about the relationship between an object's center of mass and whether the object will balance itself on a surface, whether the object will stay balanced or tilt um, at the edge of a surface. Let's check it out. So first of all, remember that an object's weight, mg, always acts on the object's center of gravity. It's called center of gravity because that's where gravity acts. Okay. Now, for most of you, most of the time, center of gravity means the same thing as center of mass. If your professor has made a big deal about the difference between the two, then you need to know the difference between them. I'm not going to talk about it in this video. Um, for a vast majority of you guys and for a vast majority of physics problems, um, all you need to know is that the two things are really the same. So I'm going to call this center of gravity or center of mass. In fact, some of you will never really see a problem where they are different. Okay? So remember also that if an object has what's called uniform mass distribution, this means that mass is evenly distributed in an object. Um, for example, if you have a bar, this means that you have the same amount of mass in every piece of the bar as opposed, so this is a uniform mass distribution, as opposed to if you have a bar that has way more mass here than in other parts. This is not a uniform mass distribution. Guess what? A vast majority of physics problems will be like this. I'm sorry, like this, will be uniform mass distribution. All right, so that's good news. If you have uniform mass distribution, um, your, the object's center of mass will be in its geometric center. What geometric center means is it's going to be in the middle. Okay? Middle. Um, so it's just going to be dead in the center right there. And what that means is that mg will act here. mg always acts on the center of gravity, and the center of gravity is almost always in the middle. It is in the middle if you have uniform mass distribution. Okay? If you have an object sticking out of a surface like this, it will tilt if its center of mass is located beyond the support's edge. So that's two situations here. I got the same bar on two desks, but this one is located here. The center of mass is within the table, right? Um, in this case, it's right down the middle. And then here it is, um, it is beyond the table. What that means is that here the object will not tilt. You can try this at home. Um, but the acceleration will be zero, right? So there's, and this is at equilibrium, it won't tilt. Here the object will tilt, there will be an acceleration that is not zero, and this is not equilibrium. So if you want an object to tilt, uh, if you want a, an object not to tilt, you want this situation here, and this is static equilibrium. So some questions will ask, what's the farthest you can place this object so that it doesn't tilt? And we're going to solve these problems using um, center of mass equation, which I'll show you here, which is actually going to be much simpler. These are not torque problems, though they show up in the middle of a bunch of torque equilibrium questions. Okay? So the equation here is that, let's say if you have two objects, um, M1's here and then M2's here, and you want to find the center of mass between them, the X position of the center of mass will be given by the sum of x, um, mx, sorry, sum of mx divided by the sum of m. And what this means for two objects, just to be very clear, it's something like m1x1 plus m2x2 divided by m1 plus m2. If you had three objects, you'd keep going. m1x1, m2x2, m3x3. Um, m are the masses, and x is the x position of that object. All right, so let's check out this example here. So here we have a 20 kilogram um, plank that is 10 meters long. So mass of plank 20, length of plank 10. Um, it's supported by two small blocks right here. One, two. One is at its left edge, so this is considered to be all the way at the left. Even though it's a little, uh, it's, it's, it's wide here, you can just think of it being... Um, right here at the very left. Um, and the other one is three meters from its right edge. So the right edge of the plank is here. This is three meters away. The entire thing is 10 meters. So if this is three, this distance has to be seven. Um, a 60 kilogram person walks on the plank. So this guy right here, I'm gonna call it big M equals 60. And I wanna know what is the farthest the person can get to the 
right of the rightmost support before the plank tips. So I want to know how far he can go to the right of this. So I want to know what is this distance here. Okay, what is this distance here? All right, and the idea is this is not really a torque, um, this is not really an equilibrium question we're going to solve with torque. Instead, it's an equilibrium question we're going to solve with um, center of mass equation. Um, and the idea is if this person, as this person changes position, the center of mass of the system will change. The system here is made up of uh, plank plus person. You can imagine if the guy is somewhere over here, don't draw this because I'm going to delete it. If the guy is somewhere here, the center of mass of the two will be somewhere like here, right? Um, if this thing was really long and the guy was, whoops, if this thing was really long and the guy was here, you would imagine that the center of mass between the two would be somewhere here, which means it would definitely tip because it's past the rightmost support point, it's past the edge, okay? So what you want to find the right mo uh, the the rightmost he can go the farthest he can go is you want to know what position does he have to have so that the center uh, the center of mass of the system of the combination of the two will end up here this is the farthest that the center of mass can be before this thing tips so basically you want to set the system center of mass to be at this point right which is seven meters from the left okay. So the, the idea is, if the center of mass can be as far as 7, what must x be, this distance here, we're going to call this x, what must x be to achieve that, right? So that's what we're going to do. And what we're going to do to solve this is we're going to expand the xcm equation. I have two objects, so it's going to be um, m1x1 plus m2x2 divided by m1 plus m2, and this equals 7. And the tricky part here is going to be not the masses, but the x's, all right? The distances. The first mass is 20. It's the mass of the plank. Um, the x of the plank is where the plank is. Now, the plank is an extended body, so where the plank is is really the plank's center of mass, which, because the plank has uniform mass distribution, it doesn't say this in the question, but we can assume it. Because, the plane, uh, because it has uniform mass distribution, I'm going to assume this happens in the middle, mg, little mg, um, the guy has big mg over here. Um, this happens at a distance of 5 meters right down the middle. So I'm going to put a 5 here. What about the guy? Well, the guy's position is over here, which is 7 plus x. I hope you see this is x, and this whole thing here is 7, right? This whole, th this whole thing here is seven so this is going to be oops sorry so this entire distance from the left is seven plus x so that's what we're going to do here um m2 is the guy 60 seven plus x divided by the two masses which are 20 and 60 and this equals to seven this is a setup if you got here you're 99 percent done we just got to get x out of here by using algebra so I'm going to multiply these two, 100. I'm going to uh, distribute the 60. 60 times 7 is 420 plus 60x. This is 80. If I multiply 7 times 80, um, I get 560. Okay. Seven, let me put 7 times 80 here. And that's going to be 560. Um, I forgot that this is 60x, of course. So... I'm going to send these two guys to the other side. So I'm going to get 60x equals 460, I'm sorry, 560 minus these two, which is 520. And the answer here is, or the, the result here is 40. So I have x equals 40 divided by 60. And 40 divided by 60 is 4 over 6, or 2 over 3, which is 0 0.67 meters. This means that x is 0 0.67 meters. It's how much farther he can go beyond that point. That's not much, right? So even though this bar um, is 10 meters long and it's supported here, 
the guy can only walk a little bit more and that's because he's much heavier than the bar so this should make some sense if you can somehow picture a 10 meter long or a 30 foot long bar um, you can only walk a few steps um, beyond its 7 meter point or 70% of the length of the bar before the bar starts tipping if you are much heavier than the bar all right so that's it that's how you would find this and hope make hope it makes sense let me know if you have any questions and let's keep going